Hi, I'm Ed Scar. I've got my last rifle and my straight silver at the ready because today we are looking at a Gaunt's Ghosts release. This is Warhammer Fest 2021 online and specifically day three Black Library. So let's scroll down the page and see what there is on display. And firstly, I can see straight away that there's an interview with Dan Abnett and I am going to have to have a good listen to this, but I'll do that after I've recorded. There's also this video, which I'm not going to play. I'm actually just going to show some stills from it, just in case YouTube comes down on me like a ton of bricks. Uh, but this is the announcement teaser video for some new models. So first we have opening up this folder. We've got some information about Colonel Commissar Ibram Gaunt. And quite a lot of this has been redacted and thanks to the auto redactors for keeping track of that. We do have to mention that that is Colonel Commissar rank and not his new rank of Lord Executor as of Anarch, I believe Warmaster and Anarch. But we go back to Blackheart, we got Voltamand, we got Caligua and Belisophon. Not all of the campaigns that uh, the ghosts have partaken in. And there's a lot missing from there and some personal notes at the bottom, including the recommendation that he be left with the Tanith first and only in case of redacted. But let's have a look at the models, shall we? Boom, and a nice action sequence here. And I notice on the left-hand side what appears to be the Chaos Cultists from the Blackstone Fortress game. I'll have to ask Ratman about that one because he has that set. There's also some Chaos Beakies around um, I don't know much about Chaos Beaky, so I can't say. But we've got front and centre uh, Colonel Commissar Ibrahim Gaunt with his bolt pistol and chainsword. Interestingly, his chainsword. And I'll get to that momentarily. We've got these sneaky boys up in the woods and these loud and aggressive boys up front. And then we have some specific character models. And, and firstly, Major Elim Rawn. And I still don't know how to pronounce that name correctly. I'm going with Rawn. It could be Rawn or Rowney. Who knows? The original 2002 set had Corbeck and Gaunt, but not Braun. So it's good to see that we now have an option, an official option for him. Interestingly, and this is why I'm still holding this war knife, that is a very different style to what most of us have been um, imagining when we've been reading the books. This is a double-edged blade, whereas... And you can see my version here. This is a single-edged blade. Most people see the Tanith Warknife as single-edged. However, these models are double-edged. But all told, that's a pretty cool model. The uh, sculpting on the face, particularly the painting on the face. You know, Games Workshop's painting's always been pretty good. I'm not going to be able to achieve that level. But here on the cloak, we actually have the Tanith single knife um emblem whereas the original founding had three blades after um spoiler warnings happened the tanith soldiers would often snap off the side uh the side two and just leave the center one in place so it's really cool that we've got that particularly as it's molded in the original 2002 models didn't have that here we have Owen McCall on a bit of a tree thing going on. Again, we've got the double-edged war knife and the uh, Tanith single-bladed emblem. He's got his last rifle slung over his shoulder, and I can see wood grain in that stock. We'll have to check some of the other pictures to see just how much there is there, if that's a molded or if that's painted in. We'll find out, I'm sure. And here we have Colm Corbeck. Now we do have an original model of Colm Corbeck from 2002, so I can do a comparison, yay. And it is a very different style. Big and grizzled, much more so. Even the, the original was big and grizzled. This is even more grizzled. I do very much like this one. And we've got a good shot here of the last gun. And this is a very different pattern of last gun to any that we've seen before. Certainly very different to the galaxy pattern that the original 2002 models have. And also the Vintrell pattern that I've been using with my Cadian conversions. And I'm pretty sure, it's hard, again, it's hard to tell in the photographs, but I'm pretty sure that that wood grain is actually sculpted into the model. I don't think that is uh, painted on, but in, it's still hard to tell. Mad Larkin, and I'm really liking this. I am noticing that on the cloaks, there's little tabs, tassels, uh, clips, I'm not sure what they are, uh, dotted around, particularly on the shoulders, but also uh, down the opening as well. I'm sure everyone cares about that. That's just what I'm noticing. 
the the hood shape here with this little bit sticking out of the back of the head that's very reminiscent of the original set so I'm pretty sure that putting these side by side they might be interesting together they might be comparable I certainly think they'll fit so long as they are the right scales of course I'm pretty sure Games Workshop wouldn't do that to us they're going to be 34 mil 35 mil aren't they and he's got a little bit of tree as well. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing the sprue because there's probably going to be a whole bunch of tree bits for basing and that kind of stuff. And Colonel Commissar Ibrahim Gaunt. And before I look at Gaunt himself, I want to look at the cloak because as far as I can see, this is the best view we have of the back uh, of any of the cloaks, given that that's sort of the one thing that the ghosts are known for, like the visually distinct element of Tanith First and Only Soldier. This is the only time we actually see like the actual cloak and i do like the molding here we've got good ripples and rustles and uh, comparing the kind of the front profile of them they all look nicely dynamic in in different ways that fits each of the, each of the models but again we've got more of these um clips or bands just to add some visual interest as well an interesting camera pattern very different to what i've tried and i might try and replicate this Certainly with the, the mud along the lower edge here, that looks pretty good. But as I've mentioned, I'm not as good as a painter as the guys painting these. So just before it fades out, let's have a look at this and compare it to the original Gaunt model. And the big difference here, and I did mention this uh, briefly before, the 2002 Gaunt model has a power sword, the Sword of Hieronimo, and the 2021 model has the chain sword. For anyone who cares about the story, and I'm sure everyone who's listening already knows this, in the first two books, Gaunt has chain sword. In the third book, he loses it and then gets the power sword from then on. So this is a depiction of Gaunt from the first two books or early in the third book. And it's interesting to note that all of the characters in this set are Tanith born. None of them are Vervenhivers. Hmm. I only just realized that. So interesting. But we have a different style of Commissar uniform. He has a much bigger cap with this ludicrous eagle thing going on, as the Imperium are wont to do. And they've painted the bolt pistol black in the more modern style, even though back when the first two books were out it was always red cased uh, bolt pistols i guess it is just to fit in with the modern painting style that's fine i'll let them get away with it what we don't get on the other hand is a close-up view of bragg and it does say further down the page that this is bragg and yes that's an auto cannon. we've had this discussion before <laughs> in fact you will be seeing this discussion in uh, my next video when I uh, when I make Cena and Arilla. Um, I just need to finish up the editing and get that uploaded. Heavy heavy machine guns in the ghost books are uh, interestingly named and referenced, but this time we actually do have an auto cannon being carried. But that's the set. We have six models. We have Gaunt and then five of the Tanith Born. No Vervenhivers and none of the Belladons, which I find interesting and slightly disappointing i would like to have seen a few of those um everyone's crying out for tona and yes i'd like tona creed as well and sorik and dar and banda and there's a long long list there's a lot of characters in these books i assume that games workshop would never make them all but um a little variety and of course more information at warhammercommunity.com in fact that is where i'm at so let's scroll down the page and have a look at some of the other things if you're not familiar, I am. The Gaunt's Ghosts are protagonists of a long-running series depicting the trials and tribulations of Ibram Gaunt and his ill-fated Astra Militarum Regiment. The Ghosts have been around since before Astra Militarum was a thing. It was always the Imperial Guard. Faithful readers of the books no doubt have a soft spot for the original cast who served as their Colonel Commissar's most trusted retainers. They're back. They've been redesigned in plastic. And that is uh, one of the biggest things that I like. This is a plastic kit, which means that uh, there's a bit more conversion potential, particularly as I'll be doubling up on Gaunt and Corbeck. I might convert them to someone else, or I might keep them as they are. I haven't decided. And even here, they're talking about the key characters from the early Gaunt's Ghost books. Colonel Commissar Ibram Gaunt. He was a rising star until Warmaster Slado passed away and then everything went all right and column here uh mentioning that he takes command of the second platoon and elim Rorn, an expert with a blade Rorn's handsome face hides a murderous glint in his eyes <laughs> ain't that the truth 
good old Larks. Somewhat eccentric, but doesn't affect his aim, is definitely something that's written on his personnel file. And Bragg, and this is the only time we get a good look at Bragg. And I have to think that this autocannon must be quite a bit smaller than the Heavy Weapons Team autocannon, probably half the size, just the way he's holding it and the way that model looks. Unless this model is, of course, uh, 60 millimeters tall, which is possible, but unlikely. His accuracy leaves a lot to be desired, earning him the nickname Try Again. Try Again, Bragg. And McCall. I think this one might be my favorite of the set, just the way he's standing on this uh, tree thing with the moss and the... It's a good pose. I like it. And further down the page, we actually have some more Ghosts books coming along, or, or more specifically, Sabbath Worlds books. They're, it's kind of expanding into a whole mini universe of its own. I haven't got the full set. I've got the full kind of main series of Gaunt's Ghost books, but I don't have all of the Sabbath Worlds stuff. So certainly something I need to catch up on. And this is kind of a bit confusing just how much stuff is going on here. It's a book with lots of stuff with it. This is a collector's edition, obviously. Hopefully the uh, the actual novel itself will be sold separately, just as a novel. We had this previously with Iron Star being an exclusive to uh, the Games Day. However, it was eventually released in Lord of the Dark Millennium, a series of short stories. And you'll see by the bookmark that I haven't quite finished that. The, the cat badge there is, I, I'd, I'd like to replace my uh, my plastic one here with a, a decent metal one. Uh, but again, this is the three-bladed one. Hmm. I like the idea of bringing back the three-bladed one to be Tanith, Vergast, and Belladon. That was suggested a while ago in one of the fan groups. And I really, I really like that. And that's uh, kind of a headcanon thing, but I like it. And we've got Sabbat War, a series of short stories by various authors. Interestingly, the one that I'm reading now, Lord of the Dark Millennium, is all written by Dan Abnett, whereas this is written by multiple authors. So it'd be good to see the different styles taking place here. And we also have the Sabbath World's Crusade. I think this is now the third version of this that's been released. And we have Erdesh, the Serpent and the Saint, which seems to follow some of the Space Marines in the campaign. It can't all be fun and interesting. You do kind of have to have the uh, the beakies in there somewhere. Moving on. This is a fun little one. It's, it's just a bookmark with the Tanith Cat Badge with some extra wings. I'm not sure uh, where that's coming from. Uh, we've got a little, a, a cute little poem on, on it as well. <laughs> yes, fine. Not something I'm interested in. It's cool nonetheless. And another interview with Dan Abner. I wonder if this is the same one. I'm going to have to listen to these, but I'll, I'll do that in the morning. It's uh, it's getting late. Now, this is something that's quite interesting. Volpone Glory, which seems to be another novel based on the Volpone Blue Bloods Regiment of Imperial Guard that appear several times and cause all sorts of trouble. Interestingly, on the front cover, we see a couple of the uh, characters there they are repainted Cadians. We can very easily make Volpone Blue Bloods just by painting up some Cadians, and I like that, and I may have to get that done pretty soon. From the little text block here, uh, it seems to be a completely separate story from anything the ghosts are involved in. Uh, Nostis, I think the ghosts weren't there, so a completely separate tie in novel. That's a cool thing. And I haven't read anything by Nick Kime before, so maybe this is one to pick up and uh, have a good read. I also want to know who did that cover art, because that is a beautiful piece of work. We've also got some Horus Heresy stuff. There's some other stuff and some more stuff. I've not been involved well enough to know everything that's involved in all of this. There's some normal Cadians, some Necrons apparently, some other Cadians. Well, there's a whole bunch of good stuff there. Uh, mostly I'm interested in the Gaunt's Ghosts stuff, particularly the models, but also uh, some of the books seem to be very interesting as well. Well, thank you all for following along. There is, of course, comment section down below if you want to point out anything I'd missed, because there's an awful lot in here. Please also like and subscribe, because I am making a lot of Gaunt's Ghosts content in the near future. I tend to be releasing it uh, every other week and releasing 
kind of other related mini painting videos in between. And there's also a donation link down there somewhere if you want to uh, throw me a couple of pennies to keep me making these videos. But with all that having been said and all of this cool stuff going on, I'm going to go off and listen to this interview. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Ed Scar and I always will be.